Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Catamol Diaries. I'm your host, Captain Benny Van FM, and I welcome you to this Football Manager Long Term Save where we're taking the minnows of Dutch football, VVV Venlo, all the way to the very top of the footballing mammoth, whatever it is, ladder. That's, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> we, in the last episode, if you weren't here, Get ready for the biggest spoiler in the world. And I don't know what you're doing starting the series at this stage. Go back. If anything, just go to last season. And then you will be absolutely just blown away in the way that last season season finished. As we ended up being champions of the Dutch Premier Division. And that now gave us a, 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 a direct entry into the Champions League. We beat the likes of PSV, Feyenoord and Ajax to the title last season. The big boys of Dutch football. Everyone knows who those three are. No one knows who VVV Venlo are. Well, they do now in this game. But the problem was, we knew that last season we had some big players in the squad. And we knew those big players were not going to stay with us. They were on loan to us from bigger clubs in Europe. They've done a fantastic job over the last three seasons for us on loan. The likes of Brewster, Vignato, etc., but it was time for them to go back to their parent club. And we had to kind of progress a little bit and see what we could do in the transfer market. But if you remember in the last episode, we were only given £2 million to spend. And you can't go far with £2 million in this day and age of football and with the figures that get thrown around. So we had to do what we've always done. We've had to look at loan signings. We've had to look at free transfers. And this is where we've got so far. We've started the season... We've done about five games. We haven't played the Champions League just yet. I'm going to show you how I've been getting on so far. It's been very, yeah, difficult so far. We're not doing great. Let's just say that. I'll show you, and then I'll show you the draw for the Champions League, and then we'll go through our transfers as well. In fact, actually, let's flip that one back around. Let's go and start with the transfers straight away. I'm not going to lie. Th there's been a lot. <laughs> there's been a lot of going in and a lot of coming out. And, yeah, it's people are getting used to playing for us. That's all I'm going to say. But let's start with the outs and some notable outs of that. I mean, there's a lot of reserve players who went on free transfers at the end of last season. But the first person to go on a free transfer was former captain, but vice-captain, Tully Catamol, but he was pretty much captain last season, was Mark Noble. He and Lee lifted the trophy together on the final day of the season last year. But it was time for him to move on. He only had a 12-month contract with us, and I was never really interested in like progressing onto another contract as well and extending it for another season or anything like that. But he's gone to Rennes in the Ligue 1 in France and he's played every single game off the bench so far for them, but he's doing a pretty decent job for them. Second signing to go and finally go. He's been on loan for at Go Ahead for the last two seasons is Damien Van Bruggen and that's about as much as I'm going to talk about him. One of the major signings and one of our first major players that we had at the club was Niles Rosler, but it is time for him to move on. 30 years of age now. He was kind of a fourth, fifth choice central defender, and he was on a pretty decent wage. As you can see, he's on £10,500 over at Kaiserslautern. But he's gone back to Germany. Thank you for your service, Niles. He was a fantastic player for us, especially in that first season where he played 30 games for us. And then he's just been a bit part player. Didn't even start a single game for us last season. So that shows that it was time for him to move on. And that's about it, really, for players that have gone permanently on loan. Richard Nordecker has gone to Hamburg. Lionel Alberto has gone over to Portugal on loan, I think, for Chavez. Saying that straight on to the Inns. And we kind of went through a couple last season already. And then I just thought, you know what? Let's let's just not go through those players that we showed you last season. So the likes of Per Shaws, we know about him. So he's at the club. Jan Lorenzo Perola, I showed him in the last episode as well, or a couple of episodes ago, and Mustafi Sani. I signed those players on free transfers before the end of last season. Then all these players came as we hit the 1st of July. I will go through the most notable ones, the first team ones, and the first one of that is Sofan Hamrabat. And we picked him up from Club Bruges, 26-year-old central midfielder from Morocco, an international Moroccan. And I think we've Picked up a decent player, a technical ability, not the best, right? But for what he needs as a midfielder, he's pretty decent at what he pretty does. So everything's in the teens for us, and most of it, what he needs to play as a midfielder, is in the high teens as well. He comes over to us as a squad player, and I think these attributions that he's got, pretty just one, two attributions, just below 16, 17s and all that kind of stuff, 
and what we need as our squad players to build on. He's not going to get the face on if he doesn't play many games for us. As you can see, he's only come off the bench twice for us this season, scoring one goal. And I think he'll do a pretty decent job for us, especially at the age of 26 years of age. Welcome to the club, Sofan Amrabat. This is a player for the future. I've sent him back out on loan. He's gone to Sevete in Switzerland and we picked him up from... Who did we sign him from? We signed him from Sion in Switzerland as well. Obviously, he's just been relegated. He played 19 games for them last season. The player is called Claude Pereira and he was, he was suggested to us by our scouts who were scouting the under-21 Euro Internationals over the summer. And I just looked at his mentals. 19 aggression, 17 uh, bravery, uh, determined 12, concentration 13. This lad's 19 years of age and he's only going to get better. Two-star current ability at this moment in time. So get him out for a season, maybe two seasons out on loan and he'll come back to the club a very, very experienced player and he will be better for playing first-team football as well. So one to look out for for the future. And as we hit the 1st of July, obviously, that's when the free transfers properly start coming in. And the first one is... If you're a West Ham fan, if you're a Crystal Palace fan, you'll know who this player is. It's Cheku Coyote. Coyote? Coyote. We're going to go with Coyote. 32 years of age now, so coming into his final year, I would say, as a first-team footballer, and then probably getting past his best. We've given him a contract till 2024, so he's here for this season and for next as well. Already injured, not the best. But I looked at him and thought, you'll do. You'll do as a ball-winning midfielder because Alberto is still at the club and he's doing a fine job. He's played for some big clubs over Europe as well. As you can see, once upon a time, a £10.25 million signing for Leicester City on this game away from Crystal Palace. So he's not a player to be shunned at. He went to Nice, he went to Galatasaray and now he finds himself at VVV Venlo. We needed a backup goalkeeper because for the first time I decided I didn't want to renew Luca Ashby Hammond as my backup goalkeeper because he was absolutely bloody rubbish. And I think we've brought in a pretty solid goalkeeper, especially one that is very happy to be a backup. He's 29 years of age now. He's an international for Sweden, five caps under his belt, Jacob Rini. And as a goalkeeper, he's got everything that you need. Not superb, but not bad. Just good. That's what it is. And we picked him up from... AAB, that's how I'm going to say it. I'm not sure that's how, how it is. But he's played plenty of games over the last couple of seasons for them. And he's, like I said, he's got to come in as back up to Del Ferraro. And I think he'll do a decent job for us. But now we're in the Champions League, ladies and gentlemen. It came to down to the fact that we can now pull in quite a few big names. And the first real big name, yeah, don't look at the age. Don't look at his age, right? William from Chelsea. We've got him on a free transfer. 75 caps. For Brazil, you can't buy that experience. Well, you can't. We've got him on a free, really. Drilling 16, free kick taking 16. He's got fantastic technique, fantastic determination, teamwork, work rate. And his physicals are dwindling a little bit, but they're still there. They're still hanging on. We've got him till the end of this season on a 12-month rolling contract. And he's going to do it. He's going to be fantastic for us. He's actually at the ground running for us this season. 6.7. He's got two in five games. I'll take that. Yeah, I went a bit mental. <laughs> Diego Godin and central defender. Because obviously we lost Kick Perry. I thought we needed a centre-back. 157 caps for Uruguay. Again, experience you can't buy. Look at those mentals. And look at those physicals for a defender. Well, not physicals, techniques for a Don't look at the physicals. Keep away from that one. Diego Godin, absolute legend of football. Ex in, uh, Atletico Madrid and Inter Milan. He went on loan over to Lyon last season and played 25 games in Ligue 1. And we have brought him on board. And he's played for us this season. He's not been Diego Golding that I thought was going to be Diego Golding. He gets knocked off the ball. He gets outpaced a little bit. But I'm just thinking, just to be around the dressing room now, he could be a really good signing. Basically, we haven't had the best start. He's been playing centre-half and we've just had to bring someone in on loan. And I'll show you that person in a second. He's going to be a backup from now on, but what a backup he will be. Again, got him on a 12-month contract. He is down as a star player for us, and he will play a bit part. Next signing, we just needed a left midfielder, basically, because John Yaboa has gone, and I looked at this kid and thought, you could still do it. 32 years old, Andre Oyen. Swansea fans alike will know who this kid is. Premier League fans alike will know who this person is. And 
he's still got it. Look at those attributions. I mean, he's not going anywhere, is he? For £5,500 per week, we picked up a player who I think can give us two years of his best. I really do. He's a personality, he's a perfectionist, which I love. He's a winger. I mean, he's a current ability of free star, potential ability of free star, which means he's a good player for the Dutch division. And if he starts to win him, we've got other players in the background as well that can come in and, and fill into his position. But for now, again, 98 caps for his country, for Ghana. You can't buy that experience. One name from the past. There we go. We got Dean Ghana back on loan from West Ham. He wasn't happy. He went to West Ham, back to West Ham last season, and he missed out on winning the league with us. As you can see, he was with us for one season, and he was an absolute genius for us. He's not doing too bad for us as well this year for us. And do you know what? I'm very happy with what we've pulled in. 24 years of age now. He's still valued at over £12 million. They're saying his current ability is good for this division, but it could be absolutely outstanding. So if we play him and play him well, then I can only see good things for Grady, Dean Ghana. And because we haven't got Vignato anymore, this kid is going to start every single game for us. Welcome back to the club, Mr. Grady, Dean Ghana. We lost Valentini over the summer, so a bit of experience at right back. And we just needed someone that's going to come in and be a backup for us. So we brought this kid in, Cesar um, Kazwicks. I'm going to go with French under-21 international. We've got him on loan from Lazio. Doesn't pull up many trees, doesn't set the world alight, but he will do us a job at right back when, however, does get injured or is suspended. He can fit in very, very nicely. And then this is the guy that we brought in to replace Riyad Brewster. That's right. We've gone and got ourselves a wonder kid on loan from Liverpool. So we sent Brewster back and then we just picked up another one and says, come over and see if you can do it for us for a few years now. 19 years of age, under 20 international for Argentina. Not a full international just yet, but he will be there once in one day or not. I'll tell you this one for free. Bal uh, Baltazar Lopez is our kid. And what a player he is. Dribbling 16, finishing 16, composure 15, off the ball 17. He's got everything that you need to be as an advanced forward. And I can see he's only going to get better for us. He just picked up a little bit of an injury for us for the last couple of weeks. But he's back for today's game. And we definitely need him because our other strikers that we've got on the books are not, not much. And it's the same thing as what we always have with Brewster. If Brewster got injured, then we're kind of a little bit screwed. He comes in, 7.5 already, one goal in three appearances. Fantastic stuff. Back up. For Baltazar Lopez with Xerxes, who's on loan again this season, who didn't score a single goal for us last season. And I can't see him scoring many yet, to be completely honest with you. is French under-20 international, Stefan Ascafi. That's what we're going to go with. Again, we picked him up from Manchester United on loan, valued at £7 million. Two and a half star recorded ability at the moment, potential to go through the roof. So I feel like he's a really good backup for Lopez in that position. 18 and 19, we did need a... I was hoping to try and get a bit of experience in, but no one wants to come to us. Advance forward, so we don't have to change the position up if he does need to come onto the pitch. And I just looked at his under-21 record for France. 10 caps, 7 goals. I thought this kid could be a bit of a world beater. And to get him on a free transfer, uh, to get him on a loan, I wish on a free transfer, I feel we've got a bit of a steal. Manchester United only bought him recently for 3.7 million, potential to go up to 14 million pound from Paris Saint-Germain. So he must be very highly rated. And on transfer deadline day, we had a bit, it, yeah, let me just be honest with you, because the start hasn't been so well, and I will show you in the schedule, I just feel like we just needed to bring in a bit more bulk into our midfield because I've brought a couple of players back from loan and they're just not doing it for us. So Lucien Agumi, he's an actual real player in real life. He's an under-21 international for France. He's currently on the game on loan at Inter Milan, but on the game he gets picked up from, is that Sorkes? Something like that. I'm not asking. But he played for Inter Milan. He got picked up for £4 million and he has played for Parma last year 27 times off the bench a lot but being an under 21 for France it's nothing to be shunned about he comes in a Mazala positions that we can play and he's going to be pushing for a first team spot definitely I'm liking what I'm seeing already everything's in the high teens not many not not much on his actual attributions overall that goes below 10 so very very happy with what we've got and last but not least I've just picked up an English central defender Jonathan Panzo if you're a Chelsea fan, you'll know who this kid is. He now plays for Monaco in real life. And he says that he's a fullback, but I see him more of a central defender. He's a big, big, strong man. And 14 strength, obviously. His physicals are all up there. High teens, uh, mentals and technicals as well. And this is what I just brought in. Just to kind of replace Diego Godin at this moment in time. Because we just need 
someone else at centre out with per shows to just kind of take the reins a little bit because when they put the ball over the top, we've got no one that's chasing back to kind of to tackle. <laughs> because when Godin, when the ball was going over the top, Godin was nowhere to be seen. Let me just tell you that one free. Godin would actually be better if he was in a defence of three central defenders and then two wing backs because then he could have two other players around him that could do all the legwork for him. But when it's just two at the back, he's nowhere to be seen. So we just needed to bring someone in with a bit of youth, a bit of experience as well, played plenty of games in and around uh, France and in the UK as well. He played for Monaco a couple of times. He's played over in Belgium, but he was also on loan last season at Blackburn, where he played 24 games for them and did a pretty, pretty decent job for them in the championship. So I feel like he's he is very much ready to make that step up to play for VVV Venlo. And he's also just been included in his Champions League squad as well. And as you can see, Blackburn were paying £1 million for him and we're only paying £275,000 for a full season's uh, purchase of the player so I'm very happy with what we've got welcome to the club Mr Jonathan Panzo so yeah this is how we started and our friendlies went like a house on fire to be completely honest with you we did play in what is like the, the community shield of Dutch football against PSV Eidhoven and we lost by two goals to one They're right in the middle of July really it was one of those where we played really well in this game but lost 2-1 because they scored two goals in a minute basically. Ninth and tenth minute. Donnell Malane and he's always been our bogey player. William got uh, got his first goal for the club. He got on the score sheet as well and we just couldn't get that second goal, that equaliser. If you just have a look at the stats, we had 23 shots in this game. 12 on target. They only had 11 to their 6 on target. We had more possession. We had more clear cut. Well actually not more clear cut chances but obviously more shots on target is the main thing. And they did walk away with getting the first bit of silverware of the season. Uh, but we did then go and start our first game of the season. And we couldn't get it any harder away at Ajax at the Johan Cruyff Arena. And we were 1-0 up with a Willian goal. So 2-2 two two for the Brazilian. And then Nasser Chadley getting the winner after they, they equalised on the 58th minute. And it was an outstanding performance from us. They never looked like they were going to go and get the winner or anything like that. The only problem that we did get is that Lopez did get injured after 13 minutes. We had to get Zirksy up front, but we still battled and still got the three points. And then our second game of the season was against Feyenoord, and that was followed with a defeat. And it was a difficult and a hard pill to swallow, if I was going to be completely honest with you, because, again, we played really well. 25 shots to their 10, 13 on target to their 5, clear-cut chances 2 to their 0, and they walked away with a 2-0 win. So, yeah, disappointing. But again, it was one of those where I can't be too difficult on the players or too hard on them. We just got to kind of take it on the chin and say, look at the look at the stats, look at the performance. It will come. But the problem was the two goals that they did score, our defence was very slow. This is where things have just started going a little bit pear-shaped, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. So we went 2-0 up against her and Vina at home. Lopez and Chandler getting on the score sheet. And then after the break, two quick goals. And Herenveen finished the game miles better than us. And we looked absolutely out on our feet, if I was going to be completely honest with you. Two goals from Winky Brams. And, yeah, that there was a few warning, <laughs> warning signs. Let me just tell you that, because the amount of times they got behind our defence was quite frightening. But we got back to winning ways in, with a 1-0 win over Sparta Rotterdam away from home. William with a, with a goal from the penalty spot. We changed things around a little bit in this game. Brought a new few players back into the squad obviously because of the poor performance in the second half of the previous game. And we tested out a few players to see if they were good enough to kind of, if we needed to bring someone else in. And this is where we did win 1-0. But a few players I feel like may not be up to a, another title challenge if they're in position we need players to bring in who are going to be good enough to, to go for that title challenge once again especially the players if we're going to go and try and do well in the Champions League as well so that was really evident on this 3-3 draw away at FC Untracht who were at the time I'm not sure if they still are were bottom of the table they went 1-0 up we got it back to 1-1 we got it 2-1 we got it 3-1 and then two quick fire goals again conceded and it ended 3-3 and they could have bloody gone and won it I'll be honest with you what we're missing is Riyad Brewster really because this could have been a 5 0 if Riyad Brewster would have been playing we're struggling with strikers up front so to get Lopez back after injury is key for us so today to get him back in that team is massive and that's where it leaves us it leaves us today to play PSV Eidhoven and there is the Champions League 
This is how we're going to look for our Champions League draw. Couldn't get any other, could it? City, Madrid, Red Bull, Salzburg. When I saw Red Bull, I thought it was uh, I thought it was Leipzig. I went, oh my days, what is this group? But no, that is the only shining light that we've got. But to get out of this group, it's gonna, it's, it's we're gonna need some luck. <laughs> we're gonna need some bloody luck because that is that's that's tough. That is really tough. So, but just going back onto the league, this is where we're sitting after five games. So it's not disaster. It's, we're not we're not ringing too many alarm bells just yet. But we are sitting in eighth position, and our goal difference for the very 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 first time while we've been on this save is at even. So it's just showing that we haven't really got a striker. So to replace Riyad Brewster, it's going to be a tall ask. But I still believe that Baltazar Lopez will come good. But just like I said, just being out for the last couple of games. And it's just showed a win today, though. And it knocks us back up to, like, kind of around, around the fifth, sixth position. Hopefully a few defeats uh, around, like, Den Haag. Those those usual suspects who are going to be around the top four. Your Ajaxes, your Feyenoord, your PSV, etc. I'm hoping to still be around those for this season. So still pushing for that title. But PSV have set off like a house on fire. Five wins out of five games. And yeah, it's going to be difficult to catch them. I think we're already seven points behind them. So it's going to be a big, big, tough ask. Right, game day is upon us. And here we go. It's the only game of the episode. I'm only going to be bringing you one today. And we're going to get through this very, very quickly. PSV are flying high, like I've just shown you in the league. We are obviously inconsistent at this moment in time. But we played well against them in the Community Shield at the start of the season. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that we can pull something out of the bag. Get a win here today. It will just it will it will start our season. It will set it off, and we will hit it with a bang. This is the starting eleven that we're going to go with. It's Del Ferraro in goal. We've got Javier Schurz and Panzo comes in for his debut today with Di Marco at left back. We've got Agumi as our deep line playmaker. We've changed it up again. We've gone from ball winning midfield defensive midfielder kind of thing to back to uh, deep line playmaker. And Mazala with Farai and box to box midfielder. Lynn Hurst gets in there in front of Conor Horahan. Then we've got Dean Ganna with Willian and Lopez up top. On the bench we've got Godan, we've got Amrabat, we've got Xerxes. We've got plenty of players that can come on and make a difference. I'm going to come in there like I was doing. I'm going to come in there passionate. I'm going to say we owe PSV after the last match. So we'll go out there and get the revenge. And then I'm going to come in and say to the lads, that you can go and make the difference. Everyone's motivated. Everyone's happy. Let's go and do it. Come on, let's get the win today. There's a highlight after one minute and it's coming to us. Can we start off well today? And here comes Agumi. Agumi inside to however. However, now on this right side, he's going to have a shot himself. He does, but it was always going to be a tangible one with his left foot. And the keeper gathers it very, very easily. Ten minutes gone though and it is all us so far. And I'm very happy with the start that we've made. We just need to get the ball into the goal now. There is another highlight coming up, and it's Di Marco puts it in there. The keeper does claim it very easy, though, and it's going to be kicked off, but however, it does well. But they've won the second ball, and here come PSV on the counter attack. And it's why terrible, terrible, terrible finish. PSV are starting to take control of this game now. There's Gutierrez to the header, but he's offside. I could see that an absolute mile away. Surely offside. The referee, yep, yeah, he's offside. Offside, no goal. We do hold on, and yeah, things have not, things are still not brilliant as they're playing much better than us when it comes to attack. On on stats, we're doing well, but they were the stats after 10-15 minutes of the game that played, and we haven't really done much better since then. And as you can see, the team analysis, there we've struggled for possession in this match big time. There, get revenge, says Luke Nillis. And again, I'm just going to say to the lads, you weren't bad, I've got faith in you. Come on. Like I said, <laughs> still sitting in eighth position, and this is not the most perfect defence of our title, is it, so far? We're not looking like the team that we were last season. Um, and I'm just looking at a couple of players that are on, who are playing, who are just not having a great game. A lot of 6.5s out there for us, and a 6.4s as well. And I think we're going to have to change a few things around, definitely. Right, we've got Manuel Farai out there on a 6.3 so far. Uh, Amrabat can come on and play in that position, and I think that's what we'll get him on as a Mazala. Is he that? Is he more positioned as to be a Mazala? Well, we'll just leave it for now. Actually, I'll tell you what. We'll get him as a box box midfielder. And we'll get Lindhurst as more of Mazala. Because he can actually play that position a little bit better. Just looking at a couple of other players as well. Willian has not done much on this left-hand side. So we might get him off. And we might get Andrew Ayu on. And get him on as a winger. 
on this left hand side because he can play that position a hell of a lot better and will he be better as attack yes he will Dian Ganna's on a 6.4 as well and I'm, I'm looking at him and thinking you're not doing much for me we're not bringing much to our attack so far and Baltazar Lopez on a 6.5 as well and struggling out there for match sharpness so we're going to leave it at that for now I'll give it another 5-10 minutes and then I might change it up a little bit more so I've shouted on a bit of encouragement as well to the lads as well so hopefully these, these changes can just make the difference but not much is happening in the game so far our shots are going up so we are coming forward a little bit more can we strike but it's PSV who get the highlight here can we get the ball off them pretty quickly and it's Zifu who puts it in there he's got all the time in the world here big chance massive save from Del Ferraro first real massive chance of the game I would say for PSV they had that big chance in the first half but that was a huge one and a big save from our goalkeeper he's headed away by Agumi I'm looking at Agumi as well who's on a yellow card he's nervous already we might think about getting him off the pitch Agumi off and we're going to get Alberto on and we can actually get him playing as a box, uh, ball winning midfielder and it's Andre Ayo on this left hand side now he tries to get the ball into the box no it's Di Marco now can he get a good ball in Amrabat He's being chased. Here comes Ayu. Ayu goes for the ball over. It's Dian Gano who's going to pick it up here. Dian Gano, is he going to win this one back? No. And PSV are going to come away with this one. Just looking a little bit lost up top there, aren't we? And PSV could strike here. They could. They're going to big save from our goalkeeper. And still, just we just haven't got that goal scoring edge at the minute. We haven't got anyone to put the ball into the back of the net for us. PSV are literally turning the screw here. I don't want to come off positive because I want us to I want us to win the game, if anything. And we're not going to win the game. We're going down to 10th. Things are not good at the minute. Things are not good at the minute. <laughs> Del Ferraro can't keep it out. We won the bloody league last season. And I'm going to let you into a little secret here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to win the league this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean I'm not making excuses but to give me £2 million for getting us into the Champions League and for getting us to win the league wasn't enough we're never going to be able to the, the players, teams around us like Fane or PSV are spending £20 million on players and we got given £2 million £2 I can't bring in players of Riyad Brusa quality who's 20 odd million pound value to come and replace him on a free transfer or on a loan. We have to build again and keep building. So even though I won the league with them, it's very difficult for me to continue the way that we're going. We are now sitting 10th in the table, which is an absolute criminal. That is not a title <laughs> defence, is it? 10th, 10th. I feel like this is possibly the lowest we've ever actually been in the four seasons that we've been at the club. Is my job at risk, do you think? Will my job be at risk? I need to just go into the club info. I'm only on favourite personnel. I thought I might have been in the icons, or even on the legends, if I've got to be honest with you, because of my heroics and getting them the title that they never won before. I'm just going to have a quick look at what our, what our board actually wants from us. Qualify for the Euros is our board expectation for the first time, not being a mid-table finish or a top half finish. Everything else is just kind of be competitive, quarter-final reach for the Cup as well. Yeah. Disappointing. Really, really is. Not the season I, I was kind of hoping for. I thought we would be up there. But again, six games gone. A win, a couple of wins, under our belt, and we're back to where we were. Next game up though, Man City in the Champions League. So that's going to be fun. I hope you've enjoyed this episode once as much as I have. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up and share amongst family and friends like you always do. Thank you for your support recently. It is well much appreciated from me. If you love your Football Manager content, then please go and subscribe to my channel. Just click on my name below this video. Go to my page on YouTube and just click the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, then you will not miss every time I upload a Football Manager video as well. And if you do love Football Manager content, there's plenty of other stuff on my channel as well. If you want to keep up to date with the stuff that I'm up to personally, then go and follow me at Captain Birdieman FM on Twitter. But I also want to give a big, huge shout out to the lads over at Passion for FM for their continued support this year on everything that I'm doing for them. I've partnered to be their YouTube creator for Football Manager 2020. 
And if you want to be part of our football manager community as well, then all the details are in the description below, all the links. And if you want to be part of our Discord channel, then the invitation is also under the uh, video as well. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.